Hi, this is Dr. Ben Finio, and this video will show you how to combine resistors in series and parallel to create new resistance values. And later in the video, we will also talk about how to combine resistors in series and parallel on a breadboard. But before we start doing that, let's talk a little bit about motivation and why you would even want to bother doing this other than for a physics homework problem. For example, let's look at this assorted resistor kit available from SparkFun Electronics. If you've worked with resistors before, you'll notice that resistors tend to come in weird values, for example, 4.7 and 47 instead of 5 and 50. And you might be working on a project where you decide that you need a certain resistor value, but can't find that value readily available for purchase anywhere. Or you might already just have some resistors laying around and want to work with what you have and not have to buy some new ones. And this is where knowing how to combine resistors in series and parallel in order to create new resistance values can come in handy. Let's look at resistors in series first, because they're pretty easy. When you put two resistors in series, for example, I'm going to call these resistors R1 and R2, their resistors just add to create an equivalent resistance that's larger than the individual resistance of either resistor. For example, if I put two 100 ohm resistors in series with each other, I simply get an equivalent resistance, REQ equals 100 plus 100 equals 200 ohms. If I put a 100 ohm resistor in a series with a 47 ohm resistor, I get an equivalent resistance of 147. If I keep adding more resistors in series, that resistance just keeps going up. For example, if I put four resistors in series, I get the equivalent resistance is R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus R4, or more generally, using the summation operator, the equivalent resistance is equal to the sum from i equals 1 to n for n resistors of r sub i. If you haven't seen this notation before and aren't comfortable with it, don't worry about it. You can always just write it out like this instead. Resistors in parallel are a little trickier and less intuitive. If I put two resistors in parallel like this, meaning both ends of the resistors are connected, the equation that gives me the equivalent resistance is this, 1 over REQ equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2, or in other words, the resistances add inversely, because I've taken the inverse of each resistance here. I can rearrange this equation to solve for REQ and write it as 1 over 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2, or a little more compactly, I can write it as 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 to the power of minus 1. All three of these are the same equation, just rearranged and written in different ways using algebra. You can use whichever one you think is the easiest to handle, but it might not be immediately obvious what happens to REQ when you plug in two values for resistors, so let's just use an example. For example, if I put two 100 ohm resistors in parallel and punch this into a calculator, I will get REQ equals 1 over 1 over 100 ohms plus 1 over 100 ohms equals 50 ohms. So my equivalent resistance actually dropped. It is lower than either of the individual resistors. And again, this might be counterintuitive if you think that you are adding more resistors that the resistance should always go up. However, you can think of this as adding more paths for the current to take. So initially, the current could only go through a single 100 ohm resistor. If I add another resistor in parallel, I've added another path for that current to take. It is now easier for current to flow through here so I have dropped the total resistance or the overall resistance by putting these two resistors in parallel. Again, if I put a 100 ohm resistor in parallel with a 47 ohm resistor and plug this into a calculator, I will get 1 over 1 over 100 plus 1 over 47 equals just under 32 ohms. So the equivalent resistance in this case is less than either one of these resistors individually. And again, if I keep adding more and more resistors in parallel, that total resistance is going to keep going down. So my equation will be 1 over REQ plus 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 and so on. Again, I can write that much more compactly with the summation operator. 1 over REQ equals the sum from I equals 1 to N of 1 over R sub I. Now that we have this information, it comes in handy if we need to combine resistors to create other values. For example, if I only have 100 ohm resistors, I can combine three of them in series to create a 300 ohm resistor. I can put three of them in parallel to create a 33.3 ohm resistor. Things can get even more complicated if you start combining resistors in series and parallel. For example, here I have two 100 ohm resistors in parallel, 
which are then in series with a third 100 ohm resistor. To figure out the equivalent resistance, take this one step at a time. First, look at the two 100 ohm resistors in parallel. We know from our equation for resistors in parallel that the equivalent resistance here is 50 ohms. So we can redraw this circuit diagram with just two resistors, where I have my original 100 ohm resistor here, and now I have a combined 50 ohm resistor which represents these two 100 ohm resistors. Now I can use my equation for resistors in series to calculate the equivalent resistance of these two, which is 150 ohms. So these three resistors I have initially are equivalent to a single 150 ohm resistor. If you're prototyping your circuit on a breadboard, then you'll need to know how to put resistors in series and parallel on the breadboard. If you're not familiar with using a breadboard, then check out the link at the end of this video to a breadboard tutorial. To put two resistors in series, you need to connect them end to end, meaning one end of each resistor should be in the same row, but the other ends of the two resistors should be in different rows. There are different ways to do this on a breadboard. For example, here, this resistor starts out in row one. They're both connected in row five. This resistor ends up in row nine. Here, one of these resistors starts out in the ground bus. They're both connected in this row. There is a gap in the middle of the breadboard, so the resistors are not connected across this row. This hole over here is independent. And then here's another example where the resistors are just tilted diagonally. This one starts out in this row. They are connected through this row. And then this one goes over to this row. To put two resistors in parallel, both of their ends should be in the same row. So they don't actually need to be in columns that are immediately adjacent to each other. So for example, these two resistors are in parallel, both have one end in row two and one end in row six. These two resistors are also in parallel even though they're not immediately adjacent to each other, they don't have to be in columns A and B because columns A and E are still electrically connected to each other as indicated by these green lines here. And then finally, again, these two are just rotated, so they have two right next to each other in row 26 here, and then these holes are spaced out across row 30, but they're still electrically connected in row 30. Again, if that doesn't make sense to you, check out the link to the breadboard tutorial at the end of this video. People always ask where I make these diagrams. These diagrams are made with software called Fritzing, which is available for free at www.fritzing.org. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you want to learn more about electronics, either as a hobby or for school, please check out the links to other videos at the end of this one and the other videos on my channel. Thank you.